everybody. This is Pam with Jesus Junk Journals, and we're moving along with the Jesus Art Journal Challenge. And we're going to start on the second set, and that is EFGH. And so the first one is Esther. Let me draw my prompt so I don't forget this time. Let's see, I've got apply tissue paper. All right, I can do that. And, oh, only use black and white today. This is not going to happen on Esther. <laughs> okay, so let me find something else. Okay. Use part of an old letter. Okay, I can do that. All right. Boy, that's going to be a tough prompt. Use only black and white. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I just wanted to show you, I'm gonna cut these apart. So I've got this scene, If and oh, by, by the way, if you haven't already, go read Esther. Go read the book of Esther real quick before you do this. Get the story in your mind. So I've got here like kind of the point of it, because you know what, we're gonna go back and this is gonna be like a scrapbook, right? And so you're gonna, and people might look at it, you can show it to people. And so, you know, um, this kind of will have the gist of it, of what the, what's the point of Esther? You know, it's just this nice little story. But the story of Esther, and it says what I wrote here, is important to Christians because it reveals another plot of Satan to destroy the Jews and thereby destroy any possibility of a savior fulfilling all of God's promises. In the first chapter of Esther, it says that Ahasuerus ruled from Ethiopia to India, which would have encompassed every place that Jews lived. So basically the whole world, you know, that was going on at the time. And Jews had spread out all through there. So he had power over that. So another important insight, despite the Jews' disobedience and God allowing them to be taken into captivity, he still loved them and kept his promise. The eternal unconditional covenant with Abraham, which shows us God's unfailing mercy, grace, compassion, and love for all of us. He is faithful even when we are not. So the Jews had been taken into captivity. And so Ahasuerus was the king of this whole, basically the whole world, <laughs> pretty much. And uh, it tells a story about Queen Vashti. Well, you'll have to go read it, but here's Vashti and Ahasuerus and how, you know, he tried to parade her around and she wouldn't have it. So he got rid of her and he needed a new queen. And so there's this beauty pageant, so on and so forth, and Esther gets chosen, but he doesn't know she's Jewish. And so, meanwhile, his, her uncle Mordecai had made this uh, really evil man, Haman, which is this guy, had, had really made him mad by disrespecting him in, in his eyes. And so he found a way to uh, trick the king into signing this thing that was going to kill all the Jews. And if they had killed all the Jews, there would have been no Jesus. So that's kind of the point I was saying here. And so Mordecai finds out about it and he tells Esther. And so Esther basically has to risk her life for her people. And so the saying, the kind of the main quote that comes out of Esther is this, perhaps you were born for such a time as this, because that's what Mordecai said to Esther, because she was scared. She didn't want to do it because it she could have died. What she had to do was approach the king, and that was against the law. You don't walk into the king. You only get to come if the king calls you. And so if you go in, he has to extend his golden scepter to you, and then that means you it's okay. You have permission to come in, but it also means you're not going to be killed. But if he doesn't extend his golden scepter to you, they kill you. So she was going to have to approach him. So she... She told them all to pray and fast, and she goes in, and the king extends his golden scepter. And so she does this whole, it's this whole intricate story that God has had her do to get everything situated. It just shows how God works to protect, to protect his people, and of course, we're his people. So um, the other interesting thing is Esther, the word, the name Esther means hidden. And it doesn't sound like it goes with this, but God, God is not ever called out in the book of Esther. 
it never says God. Uh, it talks about them praying and fasting. So it's implied that they're all faithful and they, of course, you know, believe in God and, and trust him. But it's never spoken of overtly in Esther. But so Esther means hidden and God is hidden all through the book of Esther. So it's it's just a great story. And um, so here's a, here's a couple more quotes from Esther. And here's the big E. So anyway, here we go with Esther. I'm going to cut my pieces out and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've cut out the pieces and the two prompts are here. So apply tissue paper and use part of an old letter. And I need to pull an old letter out because I haven't done that yet. But I've primed my two pieces of paper. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, as we go, we learn, right? And so what I've learned is I don't like the spiral books. So I think what I'm gonna do, I've already, I'm already eyeballing one <laughs> that's just bound so that the pages go like that and there's no spiral. So I may take these out of this and somehow find a way to put them into the other journal when I get it. But I'm going to keep going um, with these. Anyway, I primed them with uh, gesso. I had some paint that I had put under this, so that gesso went over that, so that should ho hopefully seal that off so it doesn't come through. So my thoughts are purple is, you know, the royal color, but, but blue and red were colors of royalty also back when in this kingdom. So I'm just kind of thinking about that. And I know I'm gonna use some gold. I've got this gold um, Bow Bunny stencil paste that I'm gonna put through a stencil. I've got some gold um, rub and buff that I may rub around the edges. Planning on doing that. So this, I, th I feel like it's gonna be more opulent, probably completely different than a lot of the things we do. Something else I, I'm missing is white space. I feel like I'm really trying, I'm covering everything with color and I don't want to do that. I need to leave white space for a lot of reasons. So that's kind of my goal. And these will probably get attached, you know, later in the process. So I'm just going to start working on the background I want and I will fast forward through it so you don't have to watch all the agonizing <laughs> sitting here and thinking. So anyway, here we go. Okay, I was looking for an old letter. I found one from my friend in high school when she she went to Outward Bound Survival School in 1974. So I scanned it in, and so I'm going to tear it up and use it for my prompt about using part of an old letter. So... Okay, so I've got tissue that is on the back of napkins. I'm gonna use that for my prompt about using tissue. And I think what I'm gonna do is bring this matte medium back. And I think what I'm gonna do is build up the edge. I don't know, nothing else is occurring to me. So I think I'm just gonna, I don't know if that's too much. Maybe that's too much. Maybe I better start, start small. <laughs> so, put some out medium. And just sort of crunch this up. I've, I've used tissue paper on a journal before to get a leather texture. So I'm guessing it's probably a similar, gonna do a similar sort of just texture thing here. Hopefully, if I do it right. If I can get it to the edge, it's just sort of like paper mache. I 
and I guess I don't have to do the complete edge. I can do the corner and the opposite corner, maybe. Okay, so... if this letter will make it through will show through or be completely covered up but it's there adding texture if nothing else my, my friend went to outward bound survival school in canada her junior right after her junior year i guess it would have been and then she went again after she graduated high school. And so she was writing to me, telling me what all horrible things they were having her do. And she was having a great old time. She thought it was wonderful. So. Okay. So I've got my two props done already. So now I'm going to let that dry and we'll move on. So again, I was working on my journal and explaining it all and doing this and that, and I realized my camera's not on. So I'm gonna do a quick reenactment <laughs> and put this in the video so that you'll know what I did because it just goes from one thing to the other without explanation. So what I did, I took white, I used golden um, titanium white, just fluid acrylic paint, and I brushed it out kind of as a, I wanted a wet like base coat to work on and work my colors in. <clears throat> so I'm gonna brush this on and I'm working quick because I want it to be wet. Oh boy, dog hair free of charge. Okay, so it's wet. So then I got this um, fluid, the golden fluid high flow, sorry, high flow acrylic in the ultramarine blue. And I just put a couple of dots and then I started working it in with my fingers. And I, I don't know why I just did that. I did it one at a time. And so I just began to kind of blend it with my hands because it gets, you get a smoother look. It's just a different look. I don't know, plus it's fun if you like to get your hands in stuff. If you don't, you can use a brush. <laughs> and I think, actually, I think I did start out with the little um, sponge. So you can do that. But then I ended up getting my fingers in it. So however you want to do it and how, however soft you want it to blend out, that's what I did. For my back for my background and then i took then i took the spray dilutions shimmer spray in purple and it's a concord grape i think is the name of it and i just sprayed it on a couple of the corners i think i'm gonna this is probably the opposite way i did it but you'll get the idea and then i uh I think I did one at a time actually too, but anyway, I took my water spray and sprayed it so it would move. And just let it run a little bit. I watched a Tim Holtz thing just last night actually after I did this and he was talking about how you need to always turn it so you get some of these unexpected runs. Otherwise it's just blop, when you spray it. So I'm like, all right, good, I did it right. So I'm gonna spray a little bit more and then spray a little bit of water on it. Just kind of let it blend into the page. And then I dried it. 
and that was it. That was my color that I'm starting with <laughs> when you when this video picks back up. That's why that's how I got to that point. Okay, so I am back. I found an image of an old painting that was titled Esther. Somebody painted, you know, back in who knows when, 1800s, 1700s, of their idea of Esther. So I'm gonna use that as my image for the small journal I'm working on. It's kind of my <laughs> B <bee> journal. <laughs> and uh, while I'm doing this, I'll tell you, I had mentioned that I was wanting to switch to a different kind of journal. So I ordered one and it came and I got it today. This was, you know, day two of working on this. And it just came in the mail and I'm getting ready to figure out how to swap it out because it is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. So I'm going to take my, what I'm painting. Here it is. So this is Strathmore, a sketch journal 192 pages because it's thinner paper and what I've seen people do is if they have to they just glue they just glue two pages together and use that so I figured even if I did that I'd still end up with 80 some pages which is more than enough of what I need so here's the size I've been painting on so it's a little bit larger than that so I think what I'm going to do is actually take these out and I'm gonna attach them inside here somehow or other so it's all together, so I have my whole alphabet together. And so that's what I'm gonna be doing, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish it out with this. I kept this out of the printout to uh, put on the small one. So I'm gonna cut these lines apart somehow or other, hopefully without messing this up. The king loved Esther more than all the all the women. So in the beauty pageant that they had. Esther is, it's kind of a long story, sort of, but it's got so many good parts. It is, to me, quite interesting, quite fascinating. 
Okay, so I guess I'll put it here. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry. So I want to do something with this Esther Means Hidden, and I kind of wish I'd moved it down a little bit, but I wanna hide it, but I wanna make it where you can see it if you wanna if you wanna see it. So I'm gonna cut a piece of lace and figure out a way to attach it. And I'm gonna make it purple. I'm gonna take my purple uh, Dilution Shimmer Spray in purple and spray this lace. And so then you can lift it up and see that Esther means hidden. So that's what I was trying to accomplish. Once again, hindsight's 2020. I wish I'd put the hazards down just a little bit. And then the other thing I'm going to do is use the gold stencil butter. Okay, so um, again, camera off. Uh, I did some black spatters with black ink and I did some hand doodling. I put Esther on here by hand with my, you know, faux calligraphy. And I used a gold pen and I drew an arrow here so that it would draw attention to this so they'd know to lift it up if anybody was looking at it. I used some washi tape. And just some little, uh, you know, I, do, I did some little embellishing here with the white ink pen. Sorry about that. I mean, you don't, I guess, need to watch me do it. I did it here. And I think that was it on this one. Mainly, I got Esther on there because I didn't have Esther anywhere. I used the Esther on the smaller journal. And I meant to put that on and forgot. Uh, so that, I think, is that. And then I went in on the little one and wrote, I wanted to make sure I wrote Esther Means Hidden, and I wrote that perhaps you were born for such a time as this, because of course that applies to us too. And I did some little gold embellishing with the pen, 
and I did it around this little picture of Esther. And so I think that was it. So, I can't believe I didn't turn the camera on again. Um, I might do just a little bit of mark making here with the gold pen while I've got it in my hand. Okay. I love this paste. It's dimensional. I, ho I hope it shows on the camera. It's really cool. If you don't have some of that, it's worth having. <laughs> okay, so that's it for Esther. I hope you liked. I hope you liked it. I hope. Uh, sorry that I didn't get it all filmed in, <laughs> in real time, but I'm gonna try to do better. So I will see you on the next video. Bye bye.